Welcome to today's devotion. We are in the Gospel of Luke today. We're looking specifically at chapter 21, and we're going to start with verse 5. Um, Jesus' ministry was multifaceted. He uh, declared the kingdom of God. That, um, that was a prophetic role. It was also um, not just prophetic, but also a sign of uh, his authority and so forth. But he came proclaiming, he came teaching, he came demonstrating the power of God in the various miracles and the healings that he did, the casting out of demons. One of the ministry that one of the ministries of Jesus um, with regards to his prophetic ministry was to prophesy. We don't necessarily think of it all that frequently because we focus on his teaching and, and of course his death and resurrection and, and uh, the various miracles he did, etc. But he speaking prophetically gave some utterances, if you will, that are still as relevant today as they were in Jesus time. We're going to look at those then today. Let's pray. We'll get into it. Thank you, Father, for your word. Your word is perfect in every way. And as we go into your word today, we thank you that you sending Jesus, the word becoming flesh, has set us free from the darkness, the confusion, the frustration, the disorientation, the uh, fear and the shame that the enemy tries to move among this world. And you've set us free to live in the power and freedom and love of your kingdom. So as we go into your word today, may you transform how we think that we may think like you. This we pray in Jesus name. Amen. This is now verse five of chapter 21 of Luke. As some were talking about the temple how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. He said, these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left on another that will not be thrown down. This is a shock to whom he was speaking to. Because Jesus came primarily ministering and teaching and proclaiming to Jews. He wasn't exclusive. There were times in which Gentiles would be part of the crowd and he healed Gentiles as well. But primarily, he was focused on Jews because they were God's chosen all the way back from Abraham and um uh, his son Isaac, and Isaac's son Jacob. And so, in their history, God had promised to be among them and to bless them. The blessings of God that you read in Deuteronomy are just amazing. Um, they have protection from their enemies they have abundance of food. They have abundance of health. They have um, a sense of God's presence among them that gives them peace. It gives them purpose. It gives them knowledge that the other nations were intended to be envious of. And as such, in the history of Israel, the temple was a very key foundational uh, pillar of their identity because it was the temple that God chose to place the ta his tabernacle, which is the, the structure that God originally gave to Moses that was not permanent. It was t movable. It was that structure that was actually placed in the temple. And the temple was permanent and it was placed in, in uh, Jerusalem. And God has said that this is where I will dwell. And this is the place where all the Israelites were to come three times a year to offer sacrifices and to observe the three festivals that I've given. It is 
<laughs> somewhat equivalent to the American flag for us, that if people want to cause a great deal of anger, they'll burn it. The flag can can also provoke great a great sense of nationalism and pride and and it just it, it has that kind of power well the temple was that multiplied by a hundred and the temple that was in place when jesus was ministering was the most grandest of all the temples just a quick history it was not david who built the temple not king david he inquired of god and wanted to build the temple Required of God to do it. But God said, no, it's going to be your son. So Solomon built the temple, David's son. And it was then, once it was completed, the tabernacle was brought into the temple. And that lasted until 586 BC. And eventually the Israelites had turned for so long away from the Lord and uh, had followed other gods in which they were instructed not to do it. It fell into debauchery. It fell into... A, a, a practice of paganism. We're very unfamiliar with paganism because paganism is not something that is a part of our culture, not near to the extent that it was during Israel's days, but they fell into it. They sacrificed their children to various pagan uh, al uh, altars and gods. They practice various sexual perversions um, as was prescribed in worshiping these gods and um, it was a disaster and in 586 god allowed the babylonians to come in and not only take all of the remaining jews that were in the land into captivity but they also completely destroyed the temple and at that time israel completely lost all hope and identity because they had no place that was their own and primarily the place that they were living in that God had given them was no longer theirs. And therefore there was no place where God was worshiped, not the Lord of his, the, the, the Lord, the God of Israel. Well, later on, about 70 years later, after it was destroyed, they did rebuild it, but it was never near the same magnificence as it previously was until King Herod, one of the Herods built this beautiful, renovated, much enlarged temple. He did that in part to try to um, win over the Jews as far as his rule was concerned. And so at this time when, when Jesus is walking in the temple area and seeing the temple, it is the largest it has ever been. It is completely adorned with um, gold and, and ruby. It just is it's beautiful. And that's why in verse five, they're talking about, remarking about how beautiful this, this temple is. And Jesus gives this prophecy in verse six. These things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left on another that will not be thrown down. It would be a gut punch to anyone that heard that. Last time anyone heard such a, such a hor horrific prediction or prophecy was during the time of the Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah in particular, because Jeremiah continued to tell the Jews, if you don't repent and turn around, God is going to allow the Babylonians to destroy you. And as such, um, he was actually thrown in jail because they didn't want to hear that. But nonetheless, the Babylonians did destroy the temple. So it'd be a, a, a gut punch to them. And it, it would just be a complete disaster. It'd be very similar if somebody were to give a prophecy and say, I tell you the truth. You see this wonderful America, this nation that we have. I tell you the truth. This nation will not be in existence. Everything will be completely taken over by a foreign land that has no respect for the American people, that has no respect for the foundational documents, that has no respect for the, the, the values that were instilled in its inception, and you will be slaves. It, it, it would be, you can't even imagine it. This is the reaction that would have taken place when Jesus gave this prophecy. 
So, and by the way, it did, it did happen. It happened in 70 AD. So it happened about 70 years later. Thereabouts. Teacher, this is verse seven, uh, seven. They asked him, so when will these things happen? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? Verse eight, then he said, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am he and the time is near. Don't follow them. When you hear of wars and rebellions, don't be alarmed. Indeed, it is necessary that these things take place first, but the end will not, but the end won't come right away. Now he begins to do, he, he begins to, to bring together two prophecies. The one is the end of the temple. The one is the end of this age, meaning the age that came into play in Genesis 3, the age of sin and death and corruption. The end of the age in which God is separated from humanity and humanity is separated from God, which was not the intention. That age will come to an end. And Jesus is prophesying and bringing both the end of the temple and at the end of the age into a combined mosaic prediction, prophecy. So in verse 8, watch out that you are not to see, for many will come in my name saying, I am he. Now, this is a powerful thing because after Jesus uh, was crucified, rose from the dead, the reason why the temple was destroyed in 70 AD is there was a great rebellion and there were people that were claiming to be the Messiah that led the rebellion, which eventually led to the destruction of the temple. So verses um, eight and nine is all about the destruction of the temple, like I said, that actually took place in 70 AD. Then in verse 10, he tells them, Nation will be raised up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be violent earthquakes and famines and plagues in various places. And there will be terrifying sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to bear witness. Therefore, make up your minds not to prepare your defense ahead of time, for I will give you such words and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will even be betrayed by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. They will kill some of you. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but not a hair of your head will be lost by your endurance gain your lives. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that its destruction has come near. And that's exactly what took place in 70 AD. They were surrounded by the Roman army. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Those inside the city must leave it. And those who are in the country must not enter it because these are days of vengeance to fulfill all the things that are written. Woe to pregnant women and nursing mothers in those days, for there will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will be killed by the sword and be led captive into all the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There you have the complete pro prophecy regarding the destruction of Jerusalem. Now in verse 5, um, you're talking about the end of the age, not Jerusalem now, but the end of the age. And this is what we will pick up next time. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope that this gave some insight, helped give some insight with regards to G the prophetic ministry of Jesus, because it's, like I said, it's just as relevant today as it was when he first spoke it. So until the next time we meet, may the peace of God be with you. May you walk in confidence knowing that your God loves you, that your God has promised never to leave or forsake you, and soon he will return. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.